In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how to use a Python thread pool um, to improve the efficiency of some I.O. operations. If you haven't already pulled down the code and completed the setup as detailed on the GitHub README, go ahead and do that and then return back to the video and you can start coding with me in the start folder. If you're just planning on watching the video, then just sit back and we're going to go ahead and dive into the code. So I've cloned the repo down. I've created my virtual environment, installed all of my uh, pip packages. And now we're going to take a look at the program as it's currently coded and then make a few changes to it to improve the efficiency of it. So if we go into our Python thread pool folder here, you'll see we have a variety of files. The main application is represented by Dunder main, which you can see here. And what's going to happen is this main uh, function here is basically going to fire up a REST API called the Rates API server. Um, that Rates API server is nothing more than just a very simple Flask-based REST API that's going to be giving us back currency exchange information. That currency exchange information is actually initially loaded from the data folder that you see here. Um, the Rates API server itself is nothing more than just starting a new process within our application, running the Flask server, having our main program call that Flask server, and then terminate everything at the end. To actually start and terminate the server, we have it wrapped up here in a context manager, which is how we're using the with statement here to start the server and then ultimately terminate it once we get to the end of our block of code. Now you'll notice in here, um, we'll be capturing the start time of when the function here runs and then outputting the um, execution time as well as the number of rates requested and even the rates themselves to the console. So we can do a little bit of a comparison um, between the execution time for the original code and the execution time for the new code. You can see here we have a call to get rates. There's also a second one here that's been commented out, uh, get rates thread pool. The get rates thread pool is the one that we're gonna be implementing our solution for. So if we head over to the get rates file, you'll see that basically get rates is nothing more than a start and an end date. And then it calls our Flask API here, gets back the rates, and then appends them to a list, returns the list, which of course is then outputted over here. So let's go ahead and run this program and let's see how long it takes to run, um, to run the operations by making a request waiting for a response, making a request, waiting for a response. So I'm gonna open up the terminal here. If I go to the top, I can say view terminal. As you can see, I already have my Python extension installed for VS Code. My virtual environment was already configured, and so it went ahead and did the source operation here to activate it. If you don't see the VENV, in your terminal prompt somewhere, most likely your virtual environment is not activated. You'll need to activate that for um, this particular project. So we'll go ahead now and we'll run the code. We'll say Python M, and then I can simply refer to Python underscore thread pool, and it will automatically run the Dunder main file. So we'll say Python underscore thread pool. So this is gonna run the operation where we make one request at a time, waiting for the response before moving on to the next request. So we'll go ahead and fire that off. You'll see it started up the Flask server. It's now processing the rate requests. So we're doing this for working days over a three month time period. And you'll see it made a total of 61 requests and it took about 11 seconds here to make that happen. Now. If we come back over to get rates, and if you take a look at it, you see all we're really doing is iterating over each business day and then making the request for each of those um, days. A lot of developers when writing automation scripts will write their code like this. Maybe they've got to call several REST API endpoints to get some data. Maybe they'll wrap it up in a loop and they'll just basically make one call, let it finish, make the next call, let it finish, so on and so forth. So I think intuitively we all understand that waiting for that response to come back is probably gonna make things take a lot longer. 
but a lot of people may not realize how we could be how we could make this code more efficient. And one of the ways we can do that is by making it multi-threaded. Now within Python, there are several ways to implement some type of threading scheme to improve the efficiency. One of the easiest ways is to actually use something called the thread pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the top here and we're going to say from concurrent dot futures import thread pool executor. So the thread pool executor class will be used to basically set up a thread pool and then allow us to run our code within that pool, making our operations more efficient. The goal of writing things in a multi-threaded way is to basically um, uh, more efficiently use a CPU that's mostly idle because it's waiting for IO operations to complete. So now that we've got the thread pool executor imported, we'll come down here and start implementing our code. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, need a function that is going to basically be executed as a new thread. Um, to write this function, it's basically the same thing we have above. It's going to make the call to the REST API and stuff like that. But we kind of need a function that isolates that specific call that we're making. So to save a little time, instead of coding that completely from scratch, I'm going to grab some code right here and paste it in. And if you take a look here, all it's going to do is basically receive the business day, construct the URL for that business day, make the call out to the, um, the actual REST API, and then return back our string. Now up here, our return type is set to none. We'll go ahead and update that to say return string. There we go. So now we've got our get rate task. And that's basically just gonna return back a string with the date and then the actual value for, that, for, the, for the euro currency on that day. So anyways, there's our function. So now that we've got the function that can be used to run on the thread, now we need to actually write the code itself to make those calls. So to get started here, I'm going to come to the top and actually grab my start and end date. And we'll just put that down here like that. Now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and set up our thread pool executor. The thread pool executor supports the context manager. So we're going to go ahead and use a with statement. And we'll say thread pool executor as executor. And then we'll write our code inside of here to actually spin up the thread pool and make all of those requests. So um, the way this is going to work is we're going to use an executor.map function. And the executor.map will allow us to pass in the function that we want to run on each thread. So in this case, that function is get rate task. But then we also have to supply it the basically the data that will be passed in as the argument into the function, in this case, the business day. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to grab this piece of code just like that. And we're going to take that and translate that into a list comprehension. So I'll put get rate task on that line. And then we'll start our list rate, or we'll, we'll start our uh, list comprehension uh, for basically getting those days in there. So we'll say business day, and then I'll paste the four. So business day for business day in business days. And then we've got our closing square bracket here at the end, and then I'll do my closing parenthesis. Let's make sure everything lines up. We've got that. Actually, I think we're good on that there. Okay, so there's my executor map. Well, now that I've got the map, the question is, what happens here? So what's gonna happen is the executor map is going to basically iterate over the data that we produce from here, basically a list of business days, for each business day, it's going to invoke get rate task on a new thread. Now here's the cool thing about the executor. The result of this is that it actually gives us back a generator of result values. 
that generator of result values is basically going to ultimately um, be con we're going to ultimately convert it to a list of these strings that we're creating on line 41 and 42. How are we going to do that? Well, instead of returning an empty list at the bottom or that list of rates that we had populated in the earlier version, what we're going to do down here is we're going to come in and we're going to say return list. And this will actually cause the generator to enumerate and return back a list of all of the rates. Even better is it will return back all of the rates in the order that we requested them. So not on the order in which the thread operation completed, but in the actual order that we requested them. So really we get the same result that we did up here, but now we're doing it in a multi-threaded way. So we'll go ahead and save that. Then the next step we'll do is come back over to main and let's go ahead and comment out the old get rates and uncomment the new get rates. So we'll come back down to our terminal window, view, terminal. And let's just remember that the last time we ran it, it took 11 seconds for it to actually execute. Let's see how long it'll take this time. And if we run into any bugs along the way, then we'll go back and fix those as well. So we'll go ahead and run that. Look at that, 1.36 seconds. It ran in a tenth of the time. And look at how easy that was to implement. In reality, we really changed nothing about the inputs and outputs. We never really didn't change anything about the flow or add any real complexity to our code. All we did was simply use the thread pool executor to call this get rate task for each of the days. And then it took care of spinning up the threads, running them, collecting the data, tearing everything down, and then ultimately giving us back our result. That's an easy win for improving your Python programs when you've got IO operations like network calls, reaching out to databases, file systems, so on and so forth, and you really want to improve the efficiency of your application. Now, keep in mind, this technique only works if those calls to the REST API are independent from each other. I can simply call them all at once, get my data back, and the world's a happy place. If they're not independent of each other, if one REST API, if one REST API call is dependent upon another, in that case, you would not be able to use this technique. But if they are independent, this is a great way to improve the efficiency of your program. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully this will be helpful to you in your Python programming. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for live customized training for your team of three or more, please visit us at Accelebrate.com or email us at info at or give us a call for a training quote.